Welcome back to this tutorial video building a basic financial spreadsheet for uh, financial savings calculations. So from the previous tutorial video what we've got is an interest calculations where we start with a balance of $400 in our bank account at year zero, so our starting point, and then every year we add an interest payment to the bank account and the interest payment is calculated using this interest rate up here. And we can see that the interest amount we get increases each year because the interest is being applied uh, to the new increased bank balance. So that's what we call compound interest. So with this calculation, with this spreadsheet, we can do a few basic uh, predictions. So we can say, well, what happens if, for example, interest rates drop, say, to 4%. So we can go up here, select our interest, and because we're working with all our cell references and rather than typing our um, interest payments directly into the formula, we can change it once and it will update everywhere. So we saw that when we put 4% in here, the interest payments and consequently the updated balances updated accordingly. If we increase the interest rate to say 5%, we can see that our interest payments and consequent balance increase as well. We can also change our opening balance. We can say, well, what happens if instead of $400, what happens if I start with $500? or something that's not quite such a round number, so $457, and it will quite happily handle those new numbers and just redo all the calculations every time there's a change made to the spreadsheet for us. So we can do a lot of uh, scenario modeling without having to repeat a lot of calculations every single time. So that's the, the basic changes we can do to the spreadsheet. And because there are only some numbers we really want to change or some cells we really want to change, I tend to remind myself when I'm doing my own spreadsheets of that by marking those cells in yellow. So if we start changing the other cells, the ones that have formulas in them, instead of the ones that have just got numbers in them, so we go, well, okay, what happens if I want to put, say, 700 in there? We can see we can break the entire sheet, so I'll just control Z to undo that. And we make sure that we only make changes in the correct cells that we want to make changes for. So that's our basic modeling uh, spreadsheet. What we might want to do now is make some slightly more complex changes to our spreadsheet structure. So one thing that we might want to do with our modeling is we want to make, might want to model payments of the interest from the bank more often than every year. So a lot of bank accounts will pay, for example, monthly or quarterly, and we want to be able to model that. So instead of going up by one year every time, maybe we want, might want to go up by a different amount of time. So what I'll do is we'll start labeling the numbers up here. So this is an annual interest rate. And now I want to have, say, we'll start with quarterly interest. So we we'll label that as maybe three months of our payment period. And of course that's something we can change as well. And this time around, instead of going up by one year every time, we want to, we want to go up by the fraction of a year indicated by this three months. So instead of saying it's the previous year plus one, we'll say it's equal to the previous year plus three divided by 12, which is the fraction of a year that we're increasing to go up by three months at a time. And we can see that goes up to a quarter or 0.25. Now if we fill that down, we'll see that we give ourselves an error and we'll see why there is that we've, might remember from the previous tutorial, we've got relative references here for the previous year, which is what we want. But we can see that if we go down to one here, it's actually trying to um, look at different locations for the number of months. What we want instead is an absolute cell reference. So up here at the first formula, we'll change the A2 to a dollar A dollar two to indicate that we're always looking back at exactly the same cell for our time interval. Now when we fill that formula down, we can see that that's now updated correctly. So now we have different intervals. Now, of course, when we have a shorter interval than a year, our 5% per annum interest rate that we've got indicated up here, we don't get all of that 5% every time we get interest paid at three months. We only get a proportion of that. And the proportion is the fraction of a year that has elapsed between the previous time period and the current time period. So what we're going to do is go into this formula here and we'll modify it. So at the moment, it's effectively multiplied by one, so multiplied by the one year that we were previously incrementing our time. This time round, we don't want to increase the time by one, we want to increase the time by the difference between the previous one and this one. So in this case, it's 0.25. Now, we could just type in 0.25, but that means that we would end up being giving ourselves all sorts of grief, because if we then try to change this value and have a different period, then our interest calculations would then no longer update. 
So what we'll do, we make it particularly flexible and we'll say that we want to multiply it by the difference between it. We can just calculate the difference directly or we can get the computer to do so. So this time around we're multiplying our previous balance by the annual interest rate multiplied by the proportion of a year that has elapsed um, for the payment. So when we do that we can see that our interest payment has dropped by quite a bit and if we look at the next one we can see 23 approximately divided by 4 so that looks about right. And again we can follow that all the way down. Now we could do this a few different ways but this is the way I've chosen to do it for now. And we can see that we've added a smaller amount of interest more frequently for our modelling. You can see we only go for 4 years now whereas previously we went for 10. So what we might want to do is just increase the duration of our modelling. Select a larger region and control D to fill it down and fill that up. So now we've gone to 11.75 uh, years. Let's just go for 10 years, shall we? So now we have quarterly payments. And because of the way we've set this up, what we can also do is change this and maybe we want to make, might want to make it say monthly payments. So we can make that one payment and we see we get a smaller increment of a year. So it takes us all the way down to this, um, line 17 here before we get to the first year and we have smaller payments made more often. So that's one way we can make the, the changes. So that's one way we can change the period over which we get our interest paid for us. Another thing we might want to do is we might want to uh, insert one above. So what we can do now is we might want to start making additions to our savings account so we don't just want to put some money in the bank and forget about it. Maybe we want to add some money to our um, investment say every month or every payment period. So what we can do is we'll have, I don't know, maybe we want to put in another $20 every time every month. So what we'll do is we'll allocate that as a payment per interest period. I'll just label that here. And of course that's another number that we want to be able to change without breaking our spreadsheet so we'll just mark that in yellow. So what we can do now is increase and we'll just put an extra column in to indicate the payment. So we'll add there. So we'll put in the payment. We'll just put might call it addition actually. We'll look at that in a minute as to why I made that different. Now of course we don't want to make that a changeable cell reference. So this time around, what we're going to do is, starting within the first year, or the first payment period, we're going to add some money. So for now, what I'm going to do is just make sure I add the same payment every time. So what I say is equals, and just point directly at our $20 we've got up there, and we want to make that, remember, a, an absolute reference. So now we have $20 going into our account every year, and we want to make sure that our formula over here for calculating our balance takes that into account. So, so far, all the balance is doing is adding in the interest, but we also want to add in how much money we've put into it. So we just add another element to the formula. So now we have the formula that says we start with the previous year's balance, we add the interest payment, and we add the, the money that we're paying into it. So now we have updated formulas. We'll copy those all the way down the table. Again, I'm just dragging that down with the mouse and control D to do that. So now we have a slightly more flexible formula, slightly more flexible spreadsheet. So I can say, well, what happens if I start off with a much smaller budget? In fact, what I might do, just because I like to have all my numbers up the front, up the top here, is I'm just going to put the opening balance here. And we'll make that say 500 again, $500. And this is just a formatting thing just to make it a bit easier to navigate your own spreadsheet. So instead of putting the opening balance in the data table itself, what I'm going to do is make that look up at the, the um, opening balance up here. So now I'll make that so it doesn't change anymore, so I'll make that white. So now all the numbers that we can change are up here, and that's just, I find, a good design for spreadsheets. So that way there's no need to dig into the depths of the spreadsheet to work out what to update. All the things that you can change when you're doing your modelling uh, right up front and highlighted as such. So now I can change my opening balance to my 600 and we'll see what happens.